Hey guys, uh, Miss H here. I know we are on spring break right now, and I hope you guys are getting some much-deserved rest. Uh, hope you're going outside and enjoying this beautiful weather. But I did want to touch base with you guys real quickly um, about basically what's going on. Um, I hope to answer some questions for you. I hope to ebb some anxiety and maybe excite you about what's going to come up. So um, mainly I just want to make sure that your questions are answered and that you feel secure and safe and uh, hopefully make some anxiety go away. So let's talk real quick about we are aware of the fact that the school has closed for the remainder of the year. So we will not be back in our building. And for me, this is honestly kind of heartbreaking. Um, I love our crazy classroom. I love the chaos and the insanity that goes on um, for eight hours a day. And it's going to be real crazy uh, to go in there um, at some point and just empty that classroom out. So that's going to be really sad. And um, I think it's okay to be sad. So that's what's up. So basically, um, I want to answer some questions for you about what's going to happen now. So basically what? What is happening um, with the school closing? So we are not allowed back in the building, but as we've discussed, that doesn't mean that school is over. Our goal really for you is to stay engaged, and we're going to talk about really the importance of why, but I kind of want to just tell you what Miss Humphrey's class is going to look like um, and what I'm going to be doing for you to hopefully improve uh, your quarantine time and your absence in education. So this is just a brief schedule. I'm so sorry, guys. These allergies, this pollen is real. So this is a, basically a snapshot of what my schedule is going to look like. So if you go to the Daniel homepage, um, if we go to our school district, we go to Daniel, you'll see here that they have the Daniel Zoom schedule, and that's a file you can download. And you'll see here that it has all of the different conference times that you can find your teachers. But I understand that this is a very limited window. So science is on Wednesdays, seventh grade, 1230 to one. So those 30 minutes are when your seventh grade science teachers are going to be available to you. Uh, but your parents might be working during that time, or that's your brother's slot for the technology. So I just want to make this classroom a little bit more accessible to you. And if you need anything to just let me know. So uh, again, sorry for the allergies, guys. Mondays, uh, your assignments will go on the, to the CK12 platform. Those are the reading passages, the articles, and that's really to help you um, kind of wrap up this year in this unit. Also on Mondays, I will uh, have a Zoom room a live chat open. Basically, I'll have my camera and my microphone off. If you need me, just chat or say hello and I'll pop on and I can help you with whatever you need. Um, and that does include math. Stay away from me with that ELA and that social studies. I don't know anything. Tuesdays, my mom, as most of you know, is also a science teacher. Um, and we have a very large family, so something that we're going to basically be doing for fun in our house is science experiments on Tuesdays. Uh, we are going to do it on a live Zoom so anyone can join us. They're going to be just kind of goofy things, everything from like magic milk to floating water. Um, just every Tuesday, we're going to do a live stream of kind of just a super fun science experiment to get you guys excited about science. And if you have those supplies at home or you have younger siblings um, that you want to entertain, I'm sure your parents would be thrilled by you helping and teaching your siblings. Wednesday, we do have the scheduled uh, Zoom that we saw on the normal. Thursdays, uh, basically, I'm going to take the material that you learned in CK12 that week and turn it into a Kahoot. Uh, and that live Kahoot game will be from 1 to 1.30. So that's kind of like your Friday quiz that we used to take. It's now just a Kahoot about what we learned on CK12 that week. And then Friday, by Friday, your CK12 assignment should be turned in. And that is actually going to be the beginning of a three-day weekend. Uh, we will be moving to my personal, like our class that we've decided um, as science is that your assignments, the only thing required of you on Friday is that your assignments be turned in. So that's what school is going to look like. Um, we'll continue to host the live labs and the cahoots. So the content that you'll be learning during those times, Monday through Thursday, that'll be posted on Friday. Um, we are going to wrap up seventh grade. We're going to teach you about classification. Um, and then we are also, I would like to, at the end of this, do a full unit review so that you can see what's going to come back to you in ninth grade. Um, if we look at our um, 
ninth grade curriculum. So give me one second because I forgot to pull this up. So if we look at our um, Give me a second, I'm going to find that. Okay, so I found the ninth grade standards. So when you are in high school during ninth grade, you will take biology. Um, so if you look, you'll notice it's almost identical to what we did this year. Right there, we have living cells. So we have nucleus, cytoplasm, cell membrane, cell wall. Uh, we have cellular reproduction, that's mitosis. We have, um, you go a little deeper into carbs and proteins. You'll notice here we have DNA, uh, genetic material. Here we have biological traits, genetics, passing down of traits. And then here again, we have classification, single-celled organisms. Uh, here we have interdependence of life. This is ecosystems and biomes. So basically you relearn everything but theory of evolution. You relearn everything in ninth grade, just a little bit more intense. So if we can make you learn seventh grade rather than just memorize it, Ninth grade will be even easier, and it'll make that transition to high school easier. Additionally, uh, once we have wrapped up seventh grade and uh, reviewed for ninth grade, I would like to introduce you to eighth grade. Uh, it is chemistry and physics, which are pretty math heavy, so that can be kind of difficult. So I do want to go ahead and um, start showing you uh, different things that you are going, like kind of background information and vocab that are important for you to know when you go into eighth grade. Um, hopefully you will all get my joke on the wall of you have mass, you take up space, you matter uh, by next year. So we will um, start talking about matter to help you get into eighth grade. So that's kind of the schedule of what school is going to look like for the remainder of the year. Uh, now, how is school gonna keep going? How are you being graded? How are we counting what you're doing? So. Grades. I know you guys care a lot about grades. Um, I know most of you are worried about what's going on, so let me just make a very quick blanket ex statement, and then please don't cut this as a clip and put it on TikTok and same as Humphrey said. You have options. Our concern for you right now and your family is that you are safe and happy and healthy and handling what you need to handle right now. We do not want to be an added stress for you. It is not worth the panic and the arguments and the whatever uh, can happen when you're trapped in a house with somebody for 25 days. So we want you to stay engaged in academics and we want you to take pride in your work, but we also want you to be happy and healthy and safe. So going forward, everyone will move to the next grade. Um, the way we are grading quarter four is that you cannot earn lower than quarter three. So say in quarter three, before we left, you earned an 86. For this quarter, you may not earn lower than an 86. You can absolutely get a 99, you can get a 100, you can get the higher, higher grade, but you may not earn lower than an 86. Now, say quarter three was a rough time for you, you didn't do well. Say you got a 60 in the class. For quarter four, you can't, you will get a 70. Uh, we will not fail anyone in quarter four because they don't have access to technology or they don't have the resources in school. We don't want to punish you for um, not being successful on your own. But with that being said, we are still going to be keeping track of what you're doing and who's participating because that's data when we look back and say, hey, will this person... Uh, should we put them in this high school class? Should uh, we give them this opportunity or this uh, recommendation? We can look back and see how uh, you handled this time and in, in your personal responsibility. So let me show you what the grade book is going to look like going forward. So every grade will be the same category. Everything's going to be classwork and labs because that's 25% of your grade. I will be going ahead and putting in your quarter three grade so that you know the lowest grade that you'll have. Uh, for this quarter. Then basically I'm going in for participation on the uh, CK-12 assignments and putting in, if you did them all, you have 100. If you did four out of five, it's an 80, 60, 40, etc. Um, I will not give anyone lower than a 50, or excuse me, lower than a 60. Um, again, we're not trying to stress you out. We're not trying to uh, make grades a giant thing right now. We um, just want learning to be engaging for you. So Ms. Humphreys, why do anything?
I'm done, right? I passed. Great question. Because your brain needs it. Please listen to me. If you've listened to nothing I've ever said before, please listen. Your brain is a muscle. It has synaptic connections. It is firing. It is learning. It is you are doing daily workouts when you come to school. So basically what you're going to do right now is you're going to get so swole. You're going to have worked this whole year. You're going to know what a mitochondria is and what the climate of Southeast Asia is and what a variable is. And then you're going to stop. You're going to basically stop going to the gym. And then four and a half months later, you're going to try to walk into that gym and do the exact same workout. It's not going to go well. There is something in that we in the academic world called the summer slide. And it is where you lose so much of the knowledge that you've retained and so much of the ability to think the way that you did before that we're starting over. So listen to me very carefully. You can't fail seventh grade, but you can fail eighth. If you stop now and do not exercise your brain and do not try harder and do not work to be better than you were yesterday, eighth grade will be so, so much harder on you than you need to make it. You're going to get bored at some point. You're going to get tired of not thinking. And that's where I come in. That's where your teachers have these schedules for you. We have hopefully more engaging lessons and fun things to do than just assignments and reading and passages. Find, so I want to show you this. So I want to show you this resource real quick. There's this really great um, meme that is going around that is actually really helpful. Um, so I want you guys to look at this. Um, because the summer slide is very real. And like I said, you're going to get bored. So um, what I am recommending is kind of keeping whatever schedule works best for you and your family. Um, it's always helpful uh, around the house to uh, instill some chore time here, some quiet time for the family, maybe go outside, let your parents do their Zoom calls or work from home. Um, right there, you have time for lunch. Uh, it's fun to prepare lunches with your family or your younger siblings. Uh, there is both academic time with no electronics, so you can read, do a puzzle with your family. Um, and then we have time to get out morning walks. So there are these resources that are online for things that you can keep yourself busy doing. But a routine is super important just for mental health and also staying engaged in academics and doing something, not only reading a book you enjoy or tuning into the science experiments, but explaining a concept to your siblings or to your parents, because um, teaching somebody else is the best way to learn. So I really just, this is one of those times when you got to make that decision to do what's best for you. And tuning out right now and quitting is not what's best for uh, your 12 and 13 year old brains as they develop. So I want to be here to help you in any way, shape or form. With that being said, the communication that I have with you going forward is going to be more of a supportive check in on how are you doing? Is there any resources I can help you with? Uh, and your teachers will be reaching out less in terms of uh, work completion and more of um you know, coming from a place of just how can we help you because we don't want to stress you out or make this harder than it has to be. So I just want you to keep in mind that everyone is doing the best they can. We are incredibly proud of the work that we've seen you do and the maturity that it has taken to adapt to this. Um, and I miss you. And I'll probably never be able to kind of express how unfortunate this is and how much I miss seeing you guys every morning and having our time together, but uh, we're going to make it work and we're going to adjust and that's what we do. So I'm here. If you need anything, please enjoy your spring break. <laughs>